And welcome back to another Electronics and More video. Today I'm going to show you another great find from my local ReStore. For those viewers that are new to my channel, I created a video playlist showing all the items that I found at my local ReStore and Goodwill store. At the end of this video, you're going to see a thumbnail. You can click on that thumbnail and it will take you to my video playlist. Right here we have a practically brand new, I'll give you close-ups of it in a minute, this is a General Electric dual voltage travel iron. It has all kinds of settings on it and it also has the ability to produce steam. Right there you can see the nipple where the bottle would screw on. I do not have the bottle but I will explain how that works. Also included when I bought this iron was this carry bag or this pouch and this is the original pouch. The plug right over here is your standard non-polarized plug. Keep in mind this is from the 1950s. I think it was 1957 when I checked and you can use this like I said anywhere in the world. So if you're in the United States plug it in the receptacle you have your 110 volts. To use this with 220 volts you would need an adapter to go on this plug and they look like what you see right here. Okay let's take a closer look at this iron and I'm also going to disassemble it and show you exactly how it works. Right here you see the perfect condition of the power cord. This is the original and it's right around 60 years old. You can see it's got that cloth covering. There's no phrase in it. The plug is perfect. Over here you can see the cord restraint. Rubber. It's not dried and cracked and the cord is perfect all through there. Okay, right here you can see how perfect the condition is. The chrome looks like it's brand new. As well as the edges all the way around the iron. And look at the bottom of that thing. Looks like it was hardly ever used. The back. And this over here is the opposite side where the steam bottle would connect. The handle is made out of a very hard plastic. Originally I thought it might be Bakelite, but I think it's a newer plastic than Bakelite. Bakelite came about in the early 1900s, and this is much later on, so it's definitely a different type of a plastic. Over here is a switch. When you push down on it, it's for 220 volt use. When you lift up, now it's designed for 110 volt use. Now it's ready to be used with 110 volts. Over here is your thermostat. It's on off. Rotate it that's low. You can hear it click on actually. I'll get it closer to the camera in a minute. And it goes all the way up to the linen setting. Let me just move it this way. And you can see right here it says linen and cotton. Now we're going to take a closer look right over here at this fitting where the bottle will go in. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that this nipple is threaded on the outside, plastic bottle screws on, and there's a little tiny hole right inside here, right around 22 gauge. When you screw the bottle on, a needle goes inside this hole and lets very small amounts of water drip inside the iron to produce steam. Now when the bottle is screwed on, you can see this is tilted backwards towards the bottom of the iron. So when the iron is on end, which I'll show you in a minute, the bottle is going to be tilted this way. This will be the end with the water where it comes out. So the water is not going to want to run inside the iron in this hole until you lay the iron down and then the water will flow in. In the future, if I can't find a bottle for this, I'll end up making my own with a needle and a cap on the end to pour the water in. Right over here, you can see there's a white button. The purpose of that, when you go to put this in the pouch, it lets this handle go down. So if I push right here, you can see the handle goes all the way flat, making it much more compact. Lift it back up, like that. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I want to take this handle off. In order to do that, there's a screw hole right over here. And then there's one located on the opposite side 
right over here. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, the handle's been disconnected. And you can see the wires right there. Turn it this way, make it easier to see. That's where the power cord connects. Let me take this wire off right here and the one in the middle, disconnect that, and we'll take a closer look. Right here is a closer look at the iron without the handle. Here's the rear. And all the controls. Now this piece right over here, this pops off. You pop it up and it slides off, so let me do that. Reach in gently right here and just There we go. It's got this little tip right here which hooks on right there. This button comes out. Now right over here is a thermostat control. All right. So now when it rotates slowly you should hear a click. Right there. This is very, very similar to the way the thermostat works in an electric water heater. I have a video showing in detail. I disassemble the thermostat to show exactly how it's made and how it operates. And after watching this video, you'll see a link posted at the very end for that detailed explanation. But I'm going to be very brief right now just to explain. Now the way the thermostat works, you heard it click a minute ago as I rotated the dial. Inside here is either a bimetallic strip of metal or a bimetallic disc. And when you have two dissimilar metals that are bonded together, when heat is applied, one is going to expand more than the other, causing that strip of metal to bend. When that strip of metal bends enough, it's going to cause contacts in here to close, turning on heat to the iron. Now, to switch between 110 and 220 volts, right over here, you can see there's a thing that pushes up and down. See the strip of metal inside here? Right there, maybe. Pushes down on it. That's 110. When you push down on this lever, the end of the metal strip is elevated not making contact with a certain area of the heating element. When you lift up, you can see it push that strip of metal down. Now let me give you a close up in here, point out how it's all connected, and I also want to flip this over and unscrew this so you take a look inside. Now if you look right over here, this top screw and the bottom screw, that's connected to the thermostat. When the thermostat is in the off position, there's no continuity between the bottom screw and the top screw. Right over here, this is slightly magnetic. And the reason for that is a strip of metal right here that's sticking up that makes contact over here. When it touches, it allows current to flow from the top screw to the bottom screw through the elements and right here out of this screw into the neutral. Now I'm going to slowly rotate this and look right over here and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Here we go. They are connected. And we'll go backwards. And it opens. I'm going to connect a digital multimeter. Put it on a continuity alarm setting. So I'm going to go right over here. One on the bottom. One on top. Alright, hopefully I could do this. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Here we go. And open it. And that's the simple way to check to make sure that this is working properly. Now that contact is being made, heat is going to build up inside the unit. When it does, that bimetallic strip is going to cause this to flex, opening the circuit. It's as simple as that. You want it hotter, then you would move it more this way putting more pressure on that strip of metal. It makes it harder to get it to separate. Now I'm going to show you how the power is supplied to the elements. Over here is that metal strip. When I lift it up, 
it pushes it down. When that pushes down, there's continuity between this screw right here on the thermostat and this metal plate. And that affects how it connects to the elements on the opposite side, which I'll show you momentarily. When you push this back down, now this disconnects and it's connected a different way. Let me flip it over and show you. All right, the wire here, the very long one, comes off the screw on the thermostat. So you have an element here going into the metal plate, another one here, another one there, and another one over here. Now these two are connected together, and when you have 220 volts being applied to the unit, what's going to happen when the thermostat clicks in, power is going to come in right through here into this element, all the way up, around, down to this point, goes into this element, up, around, and out. So you have the full length of that element, and as a result of that, the resistance is going to be much higher for the higher voltage. When the levers push to the 110 volt position, what happens, changes are made, that power only supplies to one of these windings, the lower one. This one happens to be 20 ohms, from here to here, and then this one here, and this one here is 50 ohms. So when you use 220 volts, you're going to have a total of around 70 ohms through all of these elements. And when you use the 110 volt position, you're going to be using only 20 ohms. The lower resistance is for the lower voltage. Over here, you see the long wire going to the first part of the element right there. And here's a closer look. You can see the spring, how it operates. Those two are connected together with only the spring. The connection is made where you can't see. The longer wire comes from the thermostat and the shorter goes to a different area as well. Right here. Here's a better look at the magnet with the contact point and the thermostat. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.